Hello and welcome. I'm Peter and we're here to make progress, not perfection. But on that way to progress, we find ourselves making repetitive mistakes that we don't even realize. So today I'm here to wake you up. Wake up. Wake the fuck up. It's time to learn. <laughs> Counting down from number five, we have autopiloting a down forward two or a down forward two string after we get plus frames. On the surface, this looks like a great option since one, it checks opponents who are crouching, and two, it stops opponents who are mashing after our attacks. Attacks such as one four on hit, down forward 2-1 on hit, back 1 on block, hash a kick on hit, and quarter circle forward 3 on hit. And amongst a bunch of other attacks, right? So with all these great reasons to use down forward 2 after plus frames, what's the problem? Why is this a mistake? In the beginning ranks of Tekken, you most likely will not be punished for this. In fact, you'll probably be rewarded for it. However, when you start venturing into the land of the red ranks, the purple ranks, and the royal blue ranks, it becomes a problem. You will most likely get launched for this. Down forward 2, as great of a checking tool as it is for opponents who are mashing, loses to sidesteps. Look here, even after hatchet kick, when we're at plus 5 frames and we check with a down forward 2 1, Jack has enough time to sidestep. Yes, Jack has enough time to sidestep and launch us clean before that second hit even connects. Moral of the story here is after your plus frames, make sure you scout your opponent out and their tendencies. If they love to mash, then fine, throw out down forward two. Sounds reasonable enough. If they love to sidestep or sidewalk, then perhaps a homing attack is better suited for this. Mistake number four, we have the dreaded down back three into northern cross flowchart. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen these two moves paired together. Whether it's in the teal ranks or the Tekken God rank players, it doesn't matter. Brian players seem to, for whatever reason, default to this. This can be a risky combination of moves to pair together because of the susceptibility of being counter hit launched during the northern cross portion of the attack. Typically speaking, down back 3 is minus 1 on normal hit, which means that northern cross will come out at its fastest in 16 frames. This means that your standard down forward 2, which is 15 frames, will counter hit launch this, as well as your standard hop kicks of course. You should only be combining down back 3 into northern cross if and only if you notice two things. One, if your opponent is constantly throwing out high attacks after getting hit by down back three, or two, if you notice that your down back three was actually a counter hit. So let me explain this real quick. The frame data or frame properties of down back three changes based on if it was a normal hit or a counter hit. This is one of the few moves that does this. On normal hit, it is minus one. However, on counter hit, it is actually plus one. Four, which means Northern Cross will come out at its fastest in about 12 frames. So next time you decide to do down back three, watch what your opponent does, then respond accordingly. Mistake number three is using mock punch, mock kick, and hatchet kick to close distance. This is a huge no, 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 no. I understand why players gravitate towards these attacks to close distance. One, they cover a lot of space. Two, they deal a good amount of damage on counter hit, as well as regular hit. And three, I guess, they help players who don't have the best movement compensate for this. Despite all the great things that these moves do provide, they are not meant to make up for bad movement because all of them are duckable. That's right. To counter this method of closing space, all an opponent has to do is duck and then wall standing punish the uh, approach. I advise players to look at how they are approaching their opponents. Instead of using an attack to close the distance on the opponent, try using movement instead, such as dash block dash block. Mistake number two. Mistake number two is performing a run up hatchet kick. More specifically, this pertains to the obvious nature of how players are using their hatchet kicks. 
So many times I watch a player perform the standard back three, forward two, one ender for Brian, and then just run up hatchet kick. The primary reason for this is that players often are mashing tech rolls, or rather the opponent's mashing tech roll immediately after getting knocked down and they're not prepared to low block. Because of this, Brian players have made it their sole goal in life to run up and hatchet kick after a combo. This makes your hatchet kick timing super predictable. Make sure to read the situation before committing to this hatchet kick. After comboing or knocking the opponent down, observe. Observe how they wake up. Do they tech roll and stand block? Do they tech roll and block low? Or do they delayed wake up and do something like a spring kick? Read the situation first and then perform the proper response, not the other way around. Don't just default to run up hatchet kick. Mistake number one, the number one mistake that all Brian players make, and I mean all, is hatchet kick yet again. Yes, yes, hatchet kick yet again. Okay, this one is kind of pertaining to what we previously talked about. Lots of players, when they see an opponent is on the ground, they automatically gravitate to performing a hatchet kick, hoping that the opponent will wake up and get hit by the hatchet kick. Or they're hoping that the opponent does something like rolling on the ground and the hatchet kick will clip them. I myself, amongst a bunch of other Brian's are all guilty of doing this. And I can only imagine that some of you guys are guilty of this as well. I can't tell you how many times I personally have looked at the opponent on the ground, stared at him for like a full second, and then, hmm, I'm gonna hatchet kick him. I hatchet kick, then it whiffs, the hatchet kick goes over the body, and the next thing I know, I'm getting launched for a full combo from their wake up kicks. I think we as Brian players are all just too greedy and probably a little too thirsty for that nice hatchet kick sound. And because of this, I think it developed some really bad habits that all of us need to learn how to break. My main advice for dealing with this habit is to perform a down four on grounded opponents. Get used to using down four more and more on grounded opponents because you probably don't want to use soccer kick. Soccer kick has been incredibly unreliable, especially when opponents are face down, feet towards. Um, using a soccer kick can whiff a lot of times. So just stick to down four, because it's consistent. Don't get greedy. Thanks for watching guys and joining me on this video. Also, thank you so much patrons for your ever so gracious support. Without you, this would have not have been possible. And if you're new here and you like what you see, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon. Below in the descriptions as always, I also have my links to my Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon page. See you next time.